Now, um, fast forward from 1976 to June of 2004, Phoenix submitted a preliminary plat application to the city of Woodenville to subdivide all five lots in Summers Plat Edition to a 66 lot subdivision. Uh, the Husos then complained to the city council about this issue and uh, the city council's request the public works director reviewed the issue uh, and after his review he advised the Husos there is no road on the Phoenix property. Much of Phoenix's argument is dedicated to the idea that Mr. Munkin, uh, the public works director, made a land use decision relating to the dedication. Mr. Munkin is not the person with, with the highest level of authority to make this kind of decision. He testified in his deposition that never in his career has he made what he considered a final appealable land use decision. So for example, the zoning board might say, Mr. Munkin, what do you think about this? They might go to him for some input, but he's not the final adjudicator of, of land use decisions. Um, and he didn't, he didn't make a final decision either. His own email to, to Ms. Huzo was ambivalent about the issue. Uh, after the date that, that Phoenix asserts he purportedly made this final decision, he emailed Ms. Huso and, and asked for uh, more information so he could look into the issue further. Uh, and he's, in fact, Mr. Monk had testified under oath that he emailed Ms. Huso to give her an indication of what his initial findings were, not a final decision, his initial findings on the dedication issue. Uh, in addition, the public works director, out of an excess of caution, hired a surveyor to give him a second opinion. The surveyor also reached the same conclusion as the public works director. There is no road dedicated from the Summers Plat edition. And my understanding is you, I, I mean, I read your report, yep. but you don't have any sworn declarations for any of those people, is that right? Um, in terms of sworn declarations, um, they, none of those are sworn declarations, that is correct. Uh, with respect to Mr. Monken, that is sworn testimony. Uh, the city attorney also reviewed the document. He found no road. I did want to just point out one kind of irony here. It seemed to me that Phoenix had stumbled upon a brilliant way of avoiding the statutory vacation process. There's this whole procedure set forth uh, for vacating public right-of-ways. Phoenix has come up with a brilliant way of just avoiding all of that. All you have to do is tee it up to some public works uh, engineer who doesn't actually know anything, get him to make a decision, voila, there's a binding decision now on the world. There's no public right of way. They didn't have to go through any of the process or fundamentally submit it to the uh, city council, which is what would be required under the statute. The argument's frankly silly on its face. One of the key questions I want you to answer is just, do you think this plat, the, the summer edition plat, was is it or not? On its, in the four corners of the plat. I think it's important to consider the extrinsic evidence. So therefore, it's, so therefore it's, it's, it's not crystal clear on the face of the plat. I know, Your Honor, I, I uh, stated in my brief that on the face of the plat it's crystal clear, but let's face it, there's two parties who Argued about I it. You know, there's a thing that now here the Wizard of Oz, you know, the Wizard's telling Dorothy, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, it doesn't work here because the, uh, the, the language is so clear, there's nothing hiding behind the curtain. The language is absolutely unambiguous that they intended to dedicate a public way where the court is bound to review that as the best evidence. The existence of a dedication must be deliberate clear and express, deliberate, clear and express. A dedication will never be presumed. It must be demonstrated by clear, unmistakable evidence. Shows the center line of a future road subject to revision. It's a future road, it's not an existing road. Second, it shows a building setback line. Uh, that is not a road. That is what the plat shows. That is, not, that is not clear, express, unmistakable evidence of an intention to dedicate. But if you're subdividing, by definition, lots of things don't exist yet. You won't necessarily have your sewer lines and all that stuff. So everything is, in a sense, the future, right? Yes. So what would it have looked like, in your view, if there had been an actual intention to build a road there? And that, that's something, actually, that Mr. Monken, the public works director, addressed uh, in his analysis, and he testified it in his deposition. It would have had um, a center line, it would have had 25 feet or 30, 30 feet on either side of the road as the 60 foot right of way. You ask Mr. Hill, what would you expect to see? Well, you would expect to see basically a 30 foot uh, off center right of way. Well, 
by God, that's exactly what the, the guy who wrote this map did right up here on Northeast 205th Street. He put in 30 feet, 30 feet, exactly with what Mr. Helm would expect. He's ignoring this. He's hoping you don't notice it, but it's there. Um, and, and, and frankly, the same thing is even true around the Northeast 204th Street side. So. The lines on the road would be different than the dashed lines that you see on the plot. More importantly, to address the dashed line issue, these are solid lines. And not only that, they, they are exactly consistent with um, what they say you would expect. Yeah. We went back to Mr. Roop, the guy who drew this up, is an right down there. He looked at it and he said, looks like right away to me based on how he used to do these things, right? So, um, you know, we can talk about what the industry practice here is in, you know, year 2008, but the guy who wrote this back in 1976 says, looks like right away. Um, there is dedicatory language, as, as the plaintiffs have, sought, have argued on sheet one. Mr. Monken was aware of that. He concluded it was boilerplate. He found several other plats at the time where King County had the same dedicatory language on page one, and there was no road at all dedicated within the plat. Well, by the way, all, Mr. Hill keeps repeating, and these other folks that they've relied on say, oh, there's no streets marked on there. Well, I beg the difference. The word street is right on there. And it, and it, it goes about halfway across here. It says New Northeast Tool Fit Street, right on there, and it's well within the boundaries of the plat. Um, so to say that there's no reference to a street on here is, is you know, I'm having trouble grasping that. The assessor's records show no evidence of a road on the property. In other words, Phoenix and its predecessor has been paying tax on this road uh, throughout the last, uh, since 1976. In this record, that the assessor's records indicate no dedicated uh, right, that's something they keep asserting. It ain't in this record. Uh, lot one straddles both sides of this alleged right of way. If the right of way had really been a right of way, a road, there would have been two separate lot numbers because a lot cannot have a right of way by setting it. One other point, a uh, single lot can't be uh, separated by a right of way. No authority cited for that proposition, none whatsoever. They're just all the asserting on page 16 of the, page 15 of their motion, motion, and you can see that it's, it's nakedly without citation to, uh, you know, the Wooden Bill uh, Code or the King County Code or any state statute at all. This is just all case assertion without support. Um, the language is, as the, as, the, as the city attorney found, the language is consistent with King County's approval of the subdivision. Uh, it allowed a subdivision in the future so long as King County approved a, a road alignment in the future. And the purpose of showing this on the road was to make it clear to future purchasers that in any future subdivision we require a new road. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate your attention. I am not persuaded that um, this action is really a LUPA action. And so, uh, nor do I think um, that the Cusos were bound to um, proceed administratively. So I think all of those, uh, all of those grounds are, are denied. I, I do think that joinder is probably appropriate, but I do not think that dismissal on the grounds of the city has um, not been joined is appropriate. So um, with that, with the caveat about joint joinder, the um, motion, uh, it's not motion for summary judgment on procedural grounds is denied. The Phoenix's motion on substantive grounds, um, I really, I want to look at both steps of substantive